So this is Avid CNC's 80 millimeter spindle mount with optional tramming adapter plate. So this is the tramming adapter plate. And then this is, this plate is what they call the router mount base adapter. And then this is the 80 millimeter uh, base. And they, I think they have a hundred millimeter and a few other ones. Um, so uh, anyway, the way this works is that this uh, tramming adapter um, mounts to your Z axis. Um, it has these pretty nice uh, T-nuts on the bottom, as well as these two uh, location pins uh, that go into the slots here on the Z-axis. And then once this plate is mounted, then this guy gets uh, attached to the plate. Um, and then uh, what happens here is that this uh, shoulder bolt, this shoulder bolt goes in this left upper left corner, and this becomes the center of rotation for tramming in this axis. And then uh, there's a, a, a cam style bolt that goes down here that helps you uh, uh, get some leverage, especially if your spindle's in there. The spindles tend to be quite heavy. So anyway, this is how you tram in this direction. And then if you want to tram in this axis, you either add shims at the bottom or the top to either tilt it out one way or another. And so, I don't know, I usually I'm really pleased with CNC router parts designs of their fixtures, but in this one, I'm just sort of meh on this, uh, mostly because I feel like I'm investing, I'm adding, I'm adding this tramming plate, which is about a half inch thick. And so I'm adding a half inch of dead space to my machine, uh, and I'm not really getting all that much. Um, theoretically, I can delete the tramming plate, mount this guy directly to the Z-axis, and still get a certain degrees of, of motion. And then since the tramming in this dimension is just based on shims, I can do that without the tramming plate. So, um, I, yeah, it is what it is. I guess you'll have to make a judgment for your what's value for your money. Um, so... Anyway, so something else to note with this uh, with this kit is that most of these bolts are M metric, and so this is M6, these four are M6, this one, and this one, and then this guy and these two are actually standard. They're uh, three sixteenths, and so it's sort of this maddening mix of uh, metric and standard Allen, Allen keys. So that's just so yeah. When you're setting this up. You tighten these up. I've already gone through this once and I sort of reached the maximum amount of tram I could achieve and so I basically marked this and I had to drop it down a little bit. But here I'm just tightening up the four mounting bolts. And initially they want you to put this uh, lo location pin in there at least in their instructions. And so basically when you do that, this mounting pin goes on and it essentially is what they call their nominal or no, no tramming whatsoever. Um, it's basically just to locate um, what neutral is. And so you kind of mount this like that. And then when you want to tram, then you pull this out. I'm just gonna follow their instructions because it, I think it helps um, helps locate the other pins and not cross the threads since everything's kind of aluminum. You have these relatively hard steel bolts into this much softer aluminum. I don't want to cross these threads. So here's a better angle maybe to let you see how much uh, motion you have. So we're going to pull this pin and you can see essentially we have about this this much motion in this this axis and so the tramming adapter plate is really held to the base plate by a, these four nuts and these four ones that you're seeing in there are actually behind and they're, they're the they're the actual tramming plates mount to the to the z axis so and then any any tramming you want to do in this dimension is done with shims so uh, mine needs a little bit of shim on the bottom, so it'll look like that. Um, so that's 
pretty much that. So this is the spoil board leveling bit that I've selected to use with my machine. This is an Amana RC2255. It's a three flute, uh, half inch shank bit. Uh, RC2255, the maximum RPM is 18,000 RPM. Uh, so it uses these uh, replaceable carbide bits that have been rotated, so instead of being flat to the workpiece, they're rotated 90 degrees with the tips ground off. Uh, I went with this design simply because it seems like it's a better way to remove more material efficiently as the material comes in at an angle there, rather than just being dead flat where it seems to me all the heat, all the work would be, do be done by the tip of this insert. Um, they make a five flute in the same tool, but I think the shank is a uh, three-quarter inch and that's way too big for me so three flute will have to do. Um, I was <laughs> surprised to see I was expecting uh, Chinesium uh, but it's made in Israel so there's that. Um, you can kind of see hopefully you can see yeah uh, basically the machining marks basically this was machined from one solid piece of steel. I don't know if they, yeah, what goes on at this interface, but that should ensure, hopefully, that it's very well balanced. I assume if it's rated to 18,000 RPM. If it's not, you're going to know. <laughs>